Today, I want to share a profound insight with you, a shift in perspective that can truly transform the way you approach life. It's a departure from the conventional wisdom of pursuing things in the external world. Instead, I invite you to embrace a practice that allows life to chase after you. So let's dive deep into the essence of this transformative concept. Let's imagine the moment you open your eyes in the morning. Your mind is like a big book full of yesterday's stories, memories playing like a movie in your head. And there, right in front of you, are the challenges of today waiting to be tackled. It's a bit like your brain is a DJ playing an old playlist of songs that bring back feelings from before. But here's the real game changer. Your thoughts and feelings have the power to shape how you feel right at this very moment. It's like they hold the remote control to your mood. Think of it this way. Your thoughts act like the captain of a ship, guiding it in a certain direction. If your thoughts are stuck in the past, it's like sailing backward instead of moving forward towards new horizons. Now picture this scenario. You wake up thinking about something that happened happened yesterday and suddenly your mood for the entire day is set. It's like the first scene in a movie. It sets the tone for the rest of the story. But here's the thing. You have control over this movie. You can decide which scenes to play and how the story unfolds. When waking up in the morning, think of it as a fresh start. A new day with endless possibilities. Your thoughts and feelings can be like the wind in your sails, propelling you forward into a day filled with positive experiences. It's about steering your ship toward the future you want to create, not getting stuck in the currents of the past. Now most of us have a routine, like a daily plan. We check our phones, see what's happening on social media, and do things almost automatically. It's like we're on autopilot, following a program that's been running for a while. The catch is, this program is based on what we know, the familiar past. Think of it like a computer program that does the same thing over and over. But guess what? We're not computers, we're humans, and we have the power to change. The key is realizing that we can break free from this routine, from this cycle. By the age of 35, the majority of who we are has become a set of memorized behaviors, reactions, and unconscious habits. This forms a subconscious program that dictates our lives. But the key lies in understanding that the conscious mind can shape the subconscious. Meditation is the gateway to slowing down brain waves and entering the operating system where real change can occur. Most people wait for crisis, traumas, or diseases to force change upon them. Why wait for pain and suffering to be the catalyst for transformation? The message here is clear. Why not learn and change in a state of joy and inspiration? The choice is ours. Imagine most people spending 70% of their lives in survival mode. What does that mean? Well, it means they're always expecting the worst to happen based on things that happened before. It's like their minds are stuck in a loop, replaying old fears and worries. This constant fear affects the body, and over time, it gets used to feeling scared and worried. It's like a habit, a bad one. The challenge here is to break free from this cycle. You see, when we keep anticipating the worst, our bodies start to crave those negative feelings. It's almost like getting addicted to the rush of feeling scared or anxious. But, my friends, there's a way out of this cycle. It's time to free ourselves from the grip of constant fear and negativity. Let's dive deeper into the idea of stepping into the unknown. For many folks, thinking about the unknown might seem a bit scary because, well, it's uncertain. It's a bit like walking into a room with the lights off. You're not quite sure what's there. But here's a little secret that can change the game for you. The unknown is the place where real magic and creation happen. It's like a magical realm waiting for you to bring your imagination to life. Now, instead of feeling like you're missing something or being unsure about what's ahead, why not take a different approach? How about starting to build your future right from this mysterious place? Imagine it like this. You're the director of a play, and in the theater of your mind, you get to decide the thoughts, behaviors, and emotions you want to experience. There are no limits because you're not stuck with what you already know. You're free to create from the things you haven't discovered yet. 
Think of it as rehearsing for a play in your mind where you're the shining star. Envision a script filled with positivity, success, and all the good things you desire in your life. It's not about knowing all the answers. It's about embracing the excitement of what you can create, even if it's a bit unknown. Now think of your brain as a super smart computer. It doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's in your imagination. This is where mental rehearsal comes into play. By picturing positive thoughts and emotions in your mind, you're not just dreaming, you're actually rewiring your brain. It's like installing new software. Instead of being stuck with old programs from the past, you're creating a fresh, upgraded version of yourself. Your brain becomes a roadmap to the future, not just a record of the past. And guess what? Your body, which is like your silent partner, follows along. It becomes your unconscious mind, helping you live in the future you've envisioned. Waiting for external circumstances to change before feeling empowered is an outdated model. Feel the emotions of success, abundance, love, and healing now, regardless of your current circumstances. Your body will follow your mind. To embark on this transformative journey, start by disconnecting from the external world. Turn off your devices, close your eyes, and center yourself. In the present moment, you are the most creative. Ask yourself, can I be defined by a vision of the future instead of the memories of the past? Your personality creates your personal reality. Changing how you think, act, and feel can truly transform your life. Take time to answer the question of what you want in your life and decide on the emotions you'll feel when creating that future. Rehearse in your mind who you want to be when you open your eyes each day. Review the choices you'll make, the steps you'll take. Create the neurological hardware in your brain that mimics the future you desire. The past should not dictate your future. Decide what thoughts, behaviors, and emotions no longer belong in your future. Condition your body to align with your new mind. Awareness is the first step to change. Become conscious of your thoughts, actions, and unconscious habits. Only through consciousness can you break free from the old patterns that have been holding you back. Make this a daily practice. Dedicate time to disconnect, center yourself, envision your future, and feel the emotions associated with that future. Rehearse who you want to be. Be mindful of your thoughts, behaviors, and emotions throughout the day. My friends, life is not about pursuing external things. It's about creating from within. By embodying the thoughts, behaviors, and emotions of the future you desire, you become the creator of your reality. Never pursue anything. Instead, let life chase after you. As you make these changes, measure the effects and witness the transformation within you. Give it a shot and remember, the power to change is within you. So we gotta come initiated into this and understand it. If you wanna create a new life, a new personal reality, you gotta change your personality which means you better start thinking about what you've been thinking about and changing it. You begin to become conscious of your unconscious actions or habits or behaviors and modify them. And then we have to begin to look at the emotions that we live by every single day that keep us connected to the past and decide, do these emotions belong in our future? So most people are trying to create a new personal reality as the same personality, and it doesn't work. You literally have to become someone else. And can you select a new possibility in the quantum field and begin to emotionally embrace that future every single day to such a degree that your body as the unconscious mind, the objective mind, does not know the difference between the experience in your life that's creating the emotion and the emotion that you're fabricating by thought alone to the degree that you begin to signal new genes and new ways to change your body to look like the experience has already happened. Now, the latest research in epigenetics says it's absolutely possible. This every day 
installing the circuitry every day, conditioning the body into the emotion of the future that your body begins to change to look like it's already happened. Now this is where it gets fun because now you no longer have to go anywhere to get it. If you think that your thoughts have something to do with your future, just from a theoretical standpoint, that your thoughts create your destiny and you think 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day and 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before, well then your life isn't going to change very much as long as you're thinking the same way. If you're not being defined by a vision of the future, then you're left with the memories of the past. Is it possible then that the way you think and the way you feel can begin to produce effects in your outer world? Now that isn't something that you swallow in one bite. It's a process of gaining knowledge. It's a process of practice. It's a process of experience. But once you start seeing those synchronicities, those coincidences, those opportunities, that start to fall into place because you're experiencing change in your outer world. If you're doing the work, you're gonna start paying attention to what you're doing inside of you that's producing the effect outside of you. And once you correlate the change changes of what you're doing inside of you with the effect you produce outside of you, you're going to pay attention to what you did and you're going to do it again. And all of a sudden, you're going to start believing more that you're the creator of your life and less of the victim of your life. And those same thoughts lead to the same choices. The same choices lead to the same behaviors. The same behaviors create the exact same experiences. And we anticipate the same feelings or emotions from those experiences. And those emotions are the payoff that drive our very same thoughts. Well, our biology, our neurocircuitry, our neurochemistry, our hormones, and even our gene expression will be equal to how we think, how we act, and how we feel. And how we think, how we act, and how we feel is called our personality. And our personality creates our personal reality. That's it. I want people to begin to understand that thoughts are very powerful, feelings drive our thoughts, and that they can begin to create a better life for themselves once they understand some of these principles. We live in a world where often, when people think about visioning the future, they vision stuff. So you have a vision of the car you want, or you have a vision of an amount of money you want, or you have a vision of a home you want, and you see this with people with their vision boards. What's your take on that? And is that the right type of visioning? And what is the right type of visioning? Well, we do so many different variations because I think people integrate information differently. And all of those cars and homes and whatever that is, they are symbols of what it looks like when a person actually arrives at this concept called abundance, right? So if those things help them to associate with something that creates a feeling of abundance, and they're building their vision board to help them to get clear on their intent, then that's fine. Because they're associating objects or things or material things that they'll say, that's when I know that I'm abundant. That's fine. Other people will say, look, abundance just means that I have more than I need and I'm happy with that. And for them, there's a feeling that is associated with that. And when they begin to dream about their future, they may see themselves in a scene or see themselves a certain way. I don't care what it takes for the person to get there, because once they have their abundance, and this happens quite a bit in our work, when you finally have everything you want, there's only one thing you're going to ask yourself. How am I going to contribute to the world? How am I going to make a difference? So we use different tools to help people to get to that point. But if the person's doing the vision board and they're saying, when I get my new car, I get my new house, I get my new relationship, then I'm going to feel so great. Well, then they're back to the program, waiting for it to happen, for them to feel the emotion. They're believing their outer world has to change in order for them to feel better. There's no effect of drawing the experience to you that way. So the person has to use those tools to get them into the emotional state for them to feel like it's already happened. Now think about this. If you get up from a creative process and you feel grateful, you feel a love for life, you feel a joy for existence, you feel a passion for the moment, you will not be looking for your future because you'll feel like it's already happened. 
It's the moment that we start feeling those self-limiting emotions, that we feel separation, and then we start looking for it again. Well then, if you're waiting, you're not creating, you're in separation again. So then, whatever it takes for you to move into a state of being, and what is a state of being? Thoughts are the vocabulary of the brain. Feelings are the vocabulary of your body. How you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So then, if you wake up in the morning and you come back to your senses with a clean slate and you say, I don't feel anything, and you say, well, let me start thinking about all the problems in my life. Well, all those problems are connected to different people or different objects or things at different times and places. The moment you remember your problems, a memory is a record of the past. You're thinking in the past. Every one of those problems has an emotion associated with them. So all of a sudden you start feeling unhappy, you start feeling bitter, you start feeling frustrated. So now your body's in the past. So then, most people then create a state of being that's connected to their past. The same behaviors create the same experiences, and the same experiences produce the same emotions. And those very same emotions drive the very same thoughts. And your biology, your neurocircuitry, your neurochemistry, your neurohormones, and even your genetic expression is equal to how you think, how you act, and how you feel and how you think, how you act, and how you feel is called your personality. And your personality creates your personal reality. That's it. So then, if you wanted to create a new personal reality, a new life, then you would have to start thinking about what you've been thinking about and change it. You would have to become aware of your unconscious thoughts and observe them. You would have to pay attention to your automatic habits and behaviors and modify them and you would have to look at the emotions you live by every single day that are connected to your past and decide if those emotions belong in your future. You see, most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality, and it doesn't work. You literally have to become someone else. And you are here this week to learn vital information about creating a future and be defined by a vision of the future instead of the memories of the past. Because if you are not defined by some vision that is bigger than you and you are not passionate about that vision, then you are left with the old hardware of the past in your brain and you will be predictable in your life. So would you agree then? New thoughts, new information should lead to new choices. New choices should lead to new behaviors. And new behaviors should create new experiences. And new experiences should produce new emotions. And those new emotions should drive new thoughts. And that's called evolution. So if your brain is a record of the past and you don't have a vision of the future, then you are living in the past and you will never arrive at that new future. Now there's another potential for you to exist free from the chains of the old self. That potential exists right now. Now where you place your attention is where you place your energy. So you want that energy to move right to the top of your head. So then as you inhale, you bring that energy all the way up to the top you keep following your breath, you lock all the way to the top. When you get to the top, now you hold your breath. And when you hold your breath, you contract those intrinsic muscles and you begin to lift those muscles up and you begin to compress those muscles and you begin to push that cerebral spinal fluid up into your brain. So then why do I ask you to inhale and hold your breath? Now this isn't inhaling and turning purple and pushing. If you're doing that, you're doing it wrong. It's a slow, steady breath and you follow that breath all the way to the top, either to the top of your head or you put your awareness on where that pineal gland is between the back of your throat and the back of your head. Now when you inhale, that inhalation is very slow and very steady. It's not a big inhalation and pushing. It's a slow, steady breath and you're contracting these muscles and coordinating it and you're following your breath all the way to the top of your head. And when you get to the top of your head, I'm going to ask you to inhale a little bit more and as you pull up, you're going to lock these muscles down even further and you're lifting them up. 
once you lift them up and you have your attention either on the top of your head or the space that your pineal gland occupies in space, I'm going to ask you to lock those muscles down and pump, squeeze, or push. And I want you to push that fluid up into your brain by squeezing the muscles. Not by holding your breath harder, but by squeezing those muscles. I want you to begin to pump that fluid and begin to compress up against your pineal gland. When you do this breath, you have to demonstrate a will that's greater than any program. You have to find a level of intensity or a level of passion that's greater than the body as the mind or any addiction to any emotion. You have to be inspire, inspiration, the movement of energy. Don't be afraid of it. Just surrender into it. For some people, their body will do unusual things. That's information trying to be integrated into it. Don't be afraid of it. Just surrender into it. If your body does weird things, more than likely that's energy moving to your brain. If you have a lapse of consciousness or you all of a sudden find yourself on the ground, that's energy moving into your brain. It's happened to me numerous times. It's a sign that you're getting close or at least doing it correctly. Now where you place your attention is where you place your energy. So you want that energy to move right to the top of your head. Inspiration, the movement of energy. You have to find a level of intensity or a level of passion that's greater than the body as the mind or any addiction to any emotion. Don't be afraid of it, just surrender into it. On a Sunday morning, while she was in the shower, her husband said goodbye to his two children, yelled something to her while she was in the shower, and then went to the tallest building in Amsterdam and jumped off the building and committed suicide. Now that is a stressful event. And when she got the news, she experienced all the emotions that people experience from something that's shocking and traumatic like that. She was suffering, she was in pain, she was resentful, she was guilty, she was confused, she was angry. She went through the whole gamut of emotions. And all of those emotions, by the way, are derived from the hormones of stress. So she has an event in her life. It changes her biologically. She doesn't know how to control her emotional reaction. It turns into a mood, one long emotional reaction. If you keep reviewing that event in your mind, you begin to produce the same chemistry in your brain and body as if the event was occurring. So her body is being conditioned to the past because she's reliving the experience 50 to 100 times in a day, and her body is beginning to believe it's in the same past experience over and over again. It ultimately goes from a mood to a temperament, and now people are asking her in her life, why are you so upset? She tells the story and she's basically saying, I am this way because of this event that happened to me four months ago. So then if we keep that going for extended periods of time and those emotions are driving our thoughts and we can't think greater than how we feel, our feelings have become the means of thinking. We're thinking in the past and now we're stuck in our biology. So one day she wakes up and she's completely paralyzed from her waist down. And she can't get out of bed, so they rush her to the hospital. They do MRIs, they do all the tests. They can't find anything significant with her, so they just diagnose her with neuritis. And so now she's bedridden, and she cannot literally get out of bed. So now she can't work, she can't take care of her children. Her mother has to move in with her, and she doesn't have any money because she's not working, and her stress levels go up. So now the condition gets worse. As her stress levels go up, it's the same chemicals of stress that are knocking the brain and body out of balance, signaling the wrong genes in the wrong way. And another few months later, she develops these huge ulcerations in all the mucous membranes of her body, in her mouth, her throat, her upper stomach, her bladder, her vagina, her anus. She's got these huge ulcers. Now she can't eat, and if she can't eat, she's knocking her body now out of chemical balance even more, and it hurts. So now she's spiraling downward, and then she finally starts noticing her symptoms getting worse, and she goes to the doctor, and they diagnose her with esophageal cancer. Now the moment she gets the diagnosis of esophageal cancer, now she gets even more stressed, and she's in fear now, and she realizes that her children may not have a mom. And so she came to one of our workshops 
and I remember specifically because she came in with crutches and a wheelchair and a walker, and she sat on the left side of the room, and it was an introductory level course, and she understood that she could change it intellectually, but she had a very big challenge ahead of her, and she realized how much she was in her past. She had a vision of her future, like she wasn't visualizing anything, she just got a very clear vision. And she was so excited that she went home and she did her meditation every single day. Now she understood that she had to upregulate new genes and downregulate genes that had to do with her disease and that every day she had to knock on the genetic door. Now the first thing I want to say is that I'm certain that there were days that she didn't feel like doing her meditation and she did that anyway. She did it anyway. There were days where she had a tremendous amount of doubt and she didn't think it was possible, but she did her meditations every single day. The universe only gives us what we think we're worthy of receiving, so we gotta come initiated into this and understand it. If you wanna create a new life, a new personal reality, you gotta change your personality, which means you better start thinking about what you've been thinking about and changing it. You begin to become conscious of your unconscious actions or habits or behaviors and modify them. And then we have to begin to look at the emotions that we live by every single day that keep us connected to the past and decide, do these emotions belong in our future? So most people are trying to create a new personal reality as the same personality, and it doesn't work. You literally have to become someone else. And can you select a new possibility in the quantum field and begin to emotionally embrace that future every single day to such a degree that your body, as the unconscious mind, the objective mind, does not know the difference between the experience in your life that's creating the emotion and the emotion that you're fabricating by thought alone to the degree that you begin to signal new genes and new ways to change your body to look like the experience has already happened. Now, the latest research in epigenetics says it's absolutely possible. This every day, installing the circuitry every day, conditioning the body into the emotion of the future, that your body begins to change to look like it's already happened. Now, this is where it gets fun because now you no longer have to go anywhere to get it. If you think that your thoughts have something to do with your future, just from a theoretical standpoint, that your thoughts create your destiny, and you think 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day, and 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before, well then your life isn't going to change very much as long as you're thinking the same way. If you're not being defined by a vision of the future, then you're left with the memories of the past. Is it possible then that the way you think and the way you feel can begin to produce effects in your outer world? Now that isn't something that you swallow in one bite. It's a process of gaining knowledge. It's a process of practice. It's a process of experience. But once you start seeing those synchronicities, those coincidences, those opportunities that start to fall into place because you're experiencing change in your outer world, if you're doing the work, you're gonna start paying attention to what you're doing inside of you that's producing the effect outside of you. And once you correlate the changes of what you're doing inside of you with the effect you produce outside of you, you're gonna pay attention to what you did and you're going to do it again. And all of a sudden, you're gonna start believing more that you're the creator of your life and less of the victim of your life. And those same thoughts lead to the same choices. The same choices lead to the same behaviors. The same behaviors create the exact same experiences and we anticipate the same feelings or emotions from those experiences. And those emotions are the payoff that drive our very same thoughts. Well, our biology, our neurocircuitry, our neurochemistry, our hormones, and even our gene expression will be equal to how we think, how we act, and how we feel. And how we think, how we act, and how we feel is called our personality. And our personality creates our personal reality. That's it. I want people to begin to understand that thoughts are very powerful, feelings drive our thoughts, and that they can begin to create a better life for themselves once they understand some of these principles. We live in a world where often when people think about visioning the future, they vision stuff. So you have a vision of the car you want, or you have a vision of an amount of money you want, 
or you have a vision of a home you want, and you see this with people with their vision boards. What's your take on that? And is that the right type of visioning? And what is the right type of visioning? Well, we do so many different variations because I think people integrate information differently. And all of those cars and homes and whatever that is, they are symbols of what it looks like when a person actually arrives at this concept called abundance, right? So if those things help them to associate with something that creates a feeling of abundance and they're building their vision board to help them to get clear on their intent, then that's fine. Because they're associating objects or things or material things that they'll say, that's when I know that I'm abundant, that's fine. Other people will say, look, abundance just means that I have more than I need and I'm happy with that.